to St. Mary Parish. We are delighted to have you here with us as we celebrate the second Sunday of Lent. There is a second collection this weekend. That second collection is the Parish Monthly. And as always, your generosity is greatly appreciated. Deacon Kevin Wynn will be hosting a Lenten retreat at St. Joseph's Parish on March 19, 20, and 21, and right here at St. Mary Parish on March 26, 27, and 28th. All of those evenings, the retreat will begin at 6 p.m. There are more details in the bulletin. We remember in a special way at this Mass, Lois Flanagan. Our gathering hymn this afternoon is number 453, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. Our celebrant is Father Bisson, if you'll please stand. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your we come together in this cold, snowy, rainy night to be with the Lord, to receive his blessings, to grow in faith, to thank him for his many blessings during our lifetimes, to prepare our hearts now for the new word that he has for us. We ask him to forgive us for our faults and our failings. Lord Jesus Christ, in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you died on the cross and rose again to set us free from sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you went back to heaven to prepare a place for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, you have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that our spiritual sight may pure we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessings in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began. But now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, 
conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, do not be afraid. When the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. For the first time, the apostles saw beyond and behind and within the man they had known for three years. Beyond the symbols and the patterns of everyday life, there was something else here. There was more to Jesus than they could ever have imagined. The question is that after three years of witnessing him, raising the dead, curing the sick, turning water into wine, why it took them so long? We often miss God's actions in our own lives, too, because we are too busy. These days, society can put so much pressure on us to focus our vision, our energy, our drive solely on the pursuit of a career or money or pursuit of a person. And so we wind up giving these things such total devotion and priority that we become insensitive to deeper realities blind to human needs, indifferent to the lives, joys, and needs of those around us. I want to tell you a sad story. There was a photojournalist from South Africa named Kevin Carter. He was given permission in 1993 to take photos of famine victims in drought-stricken Sudan in a camp that was full with thousands of starving people coming to be fed. Carter took many pictures inside the center, and then he wandered outside the camp into the open bush. And he was there looking around, and he heard a soft, high-pitched whimpering. And nearby, he found a tiny little girl crouched on the ground, head bowed, touching the ground, so weak she couldn't walk anymore, close to death because of hunger. She was struggling to make her way into the camp to the feeding center to get food. Carter instantly took his camera out. He got it ready, for here was a powerful picture. He started to photograph the girl when dramatically a well-fed vulture who was taller than the little girl landed just a few feet behind her. The bird was waiting to claim the child when she died. Kevin waited for about another 30 minutes, taking pictures, hoping the vulture would do something like spread its wings for an even more dramatic image. But it didn't. After he took the pictures, he chased away the vulture, and he watched the little child crawl toward the camp struggling, she was close to death. The picture first appeared in New York Times uh, newspaper on March of 1993, just 30 years ago this month. And for that picture of this little girl, Carter won a Pulitzer Prize for the best picture of the year. He explained how he took the picture, waiting for the right light and for the bird to spread its wings. Then the storm broke. 
Cod was criticized for being so absorbed in his craft, trying to get the right picture, that he did not drop everything and rush that little child into the feeding center. Why did he wait so long? Why didn't he bring the little girl for life when the child's life was certainly on the line? Two months after winning the Pulitzer Prize, Carter committed suicide at age 33. He had not seen the child as a life that needed to be saved. He only saw that child as a picture to be taken. He was so obsessed with his work, he was so determined, so persistent, that nothing would come between him and his photos. He once said, photography is my life. I do not know anyone who would act like Kevin Carter, at least no one who is sitting in this church. But we can all ask ourselves a question during this time of then, what controls my life? Is it lust for power, for recognition, for honor, glory, for money? What makes me tick? What makes me go? Who or what rules my heart? Something does or someone does. Or here is a dreadful thought, perhaps nothing does. Kevin Carter was an addict to his photography and ended up controlling his life in a sad, tragic event. And the whole incident becomes a parable about today's gospel of the transfiguration. So many of us get sucked up into the tunnel vision of a totally demanding and absorbing job, a big career move, a spectacular deal, a saleable moment, the right advantage, you're so absorbed in getting our master's or doctorate degree, we become blind to the needs of others. They, sim they simply do not see that there are times they have to drop everything and be close to their children, to help their friends, to carry the starving child to the feeding center. Such insights, such transfigurations are, are not possible for these kind of people because they are so focused on the immediate, the here and the now for themselves. They are like Peter, James and John, not, not comprehending, not fully awake, wanting to build three small huts to stay there on the mountain. And yet weeks later, they, they would all desert Jesus. Lent was designed precisely as a time for us to wake up and examine the priorities in our life. This gospel tells us too that something might be missing in your life and lend us the time to find it. Amen. Now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again in the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will be in him. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son and the Lord and the Lord died. God, Heavenly Father, we bring to you our needs, knowing that you are listening carefully to them, because we are praying to you in the name of Jesus, your Son. For all who are facing crisis, loss, or other setbacks in their lives, may they experience God's transforming grace, trusting God to guide them to an abundant new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates who are preparing for full communion with the Catholic Church, may God enlighten them to appreciate the new life within, fulfilling the practices of Lent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the descendants of Abraham, the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians, that we honor all that we share to work together against evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For students on vacation, may God protect you on your travels, inspire you to make good decisions to renew your body mind, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That generosity and love will fortify the Catholic Appeal's life-changing ministries and programs, and ministries will be enriched here at St. Mary's as, together, we put our faith into action. We pray to the Lord. And for Lois Flanagan, for whom this evening's Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bring these prayers to you, trusting that you will answer them in your own good way and time. Because we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Our offering hymn today, number 414, Yezu, Joy of Our Desiring.
creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of your many hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, Lord. Lord God, we bow down before you and ask you to receive us together. Wash away our iniquities, cleanse us from our sins. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults. And sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always and everywhere give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so at the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Father, we bless through Jesus, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings us salvation. He is the hand to extend to us sinners. He is the way by which your peace is offered to us. For we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins. You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, and for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the salvation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing our mercy, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you over many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, this memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us his pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, this sacrifice of perfect salvation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May you make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May you keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and your entire holy people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in our friendship. Today we bring to you, Lord, Lois Flanagan, and ask you to give her life forever in heaven with you. Bring us, too, to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him... With him, in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Many needs of family, community, church, country, the world. Let us bring them all to our Heavenly Father. He's kindly, He's merciful, He's listening to our prayers as we pray in the name of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, only I can give you true peace. Look not in our sins, but rather look on the faith of your church here present, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of living Lord Jesus here present be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us give each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lord, we break this bread knowing that you are broken in love, care, and service of us. That we must be broken in love, care, and service of one another. And our eyes are open to the land. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have 
This is Jesus who has prepared a place for us in heaven. Now he gives us the bread of heaven. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Our communion song today, number 601, Christ Be Our Light.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of things of heaven, through Christ the Lord. Amen. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord and one another. Our final hymn together today, number 400, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> 